Well, Frank, this looks like one of those long, hard ones. No, you do it. You do it. Welcome to the Pope on Film. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is... Reverend Steve Galindo, the founder of the Church of Ed Wood, which um, is still going strong. I started it in 1996, and I should get some sort of medal for that or something, because that's a long time to that be doing is. this website. That is a long time. I remember like after the first few years, the church of uh, Shatner Tology decided that they were going to have beef with me. And there was a little, there were a lot of uh, fights and back and forths and kerfuffles, but I'm pretty sure that they're not around anymore. (laughs) Also, it was weird because when I first started the church of Edward and I was getting like publicity and I was on ABC news and I was on this show and I was on this radio station being interviewed and stuff like that. It wasn't a big deal for the people that I knew because, because uh, the majority of people that I knew were members of the church of body modification. Uh Yeah. And so while I'm saying, Oh, Hey, I was just interviewed uh, on Mark and Brian radio. It was really, really great. And they'd go, Oh yeah. Well, Dean Kane's coming over this weekend to do a piece on us for Ripley's believe it or not. Then after that, there's going to be a little bit in time magazine. And yeah. So (laughs) I I, I have really, I've really always wanted to put some body modifiers in uh, into a film, man. Because that is such a fucked up in, image when they're swinging by their nipples and shit. Yeah, yeah, that was the sort of thing that they did. If I'm not mistaken, they did a piece on Ripley's Believe It or Not, and the guy was being hung and everything and hung from his nipples from the ceiling. But then while they were filming, there was an accident and the things ripped off like in like a Saw movie. Yeah. There was a huge Man. accident and they got it on film. So they look like douchebags. <laughs> they look like they look really bad. Like I've never done some sort of church thing and had a huge mistake that caused blood to come out of my nipples. So I also should get a medal for that. I I have. And that's why I'm not allowed back in the Catholic church. So See, there you go. You know, there you go. Good thinking. It's my secret shame. <laughs> secret shame. Maxwell um, has watched a number of accidentally watched a number of uh, Bob's dirty shorts. Okay. What did he say? So, uh, he wouldn't understand it. No, he doesn't understand it at all. But he, at, at first the opening really freaks him out. So he keeps going, daddy, super scary is on. It's super scary. Super <laughs> scary is on. It's super scary. But then he sees you in the outfit and like a puppet shows up and he laughs. Yeah. But then it ends and there's like more music and he goes, oh, daddy, super scary. <laughs> super scary. He thinks he thinks the parts with actual Bob are hilarious, but everything else just freaks him out a little bit. Just the the atmosphere of it, I guess. That's that's interesting. Yeah, that's I I, I will take that as a serious review. Uh yeah, he he likes them because we. That's kind of that's kind of cool though. You know, I mean, grown adults don't exactly know what to make out of Bob. <laughs> yeah. So then he like I I tried watching uh 
a couple of days ago, I, I took over the TV because my son, my son is a terrorist when it comes to the television. And he yeah. just decides like, OK, daddy, I want to watch Netflix. We're going to watch Netflix and we're going to put something on and we're going to watch 20 episodes of it until I say we're done. Okay. He just takes over. <laughs> he just takes over the television on on my days off. So I I just told him, I said, I, I can't watch any more of these cartoons. I can't do it. You're just you're driving me nuts. I'm going to put something on just anything other than these really bad cartoons. You're forcing me to watch over and over again. So I put on uh, today's homework. I put on the Leonard Nimoy's Baffled playlist and he's watching it like here and there while playing with Legos. And, you know, he will occasionally look up because it's some scary movie preview or the one armed executioner or something like that. But then once Bob came on, he was just he was just, oh, super scary, super scary, (laughs) super scary, daddy, super scary. So then we're watching Baffled and he just does not care. He just doesn't care at all. But then he, he when you know, part one is done, then he stops because he knows that something else is coming on. And he's like, Daddy, is it super scary? Is super (laughs) scary on? So now that's what Bob's Dirty Shorts is to him. It's super scary. Cool. I I wish I knew this last week, which, sorry, audience, we had a scheduling conflict and just couldn't work it out and get together last week to do this show. But I I wish I knew last week because... um, I decided to take one of Bob's, the director's cut, the longer ones, yeah, and um, send it out to Troma Dance because the Ooh. deadline is April seventeenth. So I've done it up on the DVD. I've done a you know whole a whole blue. Well, no, sorry, this is my first Blu-ray. Um, did up a Blu-ray box. Just got shipped back from the printers. Put it in nice sleeve and all that. I, I would put it on the backs. Ooh, scary, Maxwell. Nice. <laughs> Very nice. But it's it's all done now. I'll get it on the next one. Cool. That'll be on the next one. Well, to be but fair. You, la- sir, you, sir, I must say, are mm. the master of the playlist. Oh, God. I, I have so much fun with that. That so was awesome. <laughs> I was so happy to see that this movie was available in pieces so that I could do that. It's so much fun to make. Oh, yeah? It allows me. It allows me to uh, to channel my inner Mr. Lobo. Yeah, yeah, and but but it it like plays like a fucking DJ. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's what I that's that's what I was going for. Like you're seeing this at a, like a movie theater, or very much a cinema insomnia sort of thing. Because no offense to Mr. Lobo, but yeah. the movies are pretty bad, and a lot of times. When I'm watching an episode of Cinema Insomnia, I'll find myself going, oh, man, this movie's horrible. When are we going to get to the really good commercials? Yeah. Like, I want to see that old commercial of Tang or some weird French girls dancing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or, like, these these com- these toy commercials. We've been watching a lot of Cinema Insomnia lately um, because, uh, well, let's just say that Previously, at cinemainsomnia.com, Mr. Lobo had his videos embedded on the site in a way where it was just impossible to download those videos off of his website and put them on a flash drive and connect them to your television and watch them freely. But now he's moved all of his uh, videos to uh, vimeo.com. Now, I'm not not saying... I'm not sure what website he's on. Uh, isn't he on Ustream? He's sure. on a he's on a he's on a bunch of different things. But now, yeah. if you go to his website, it, he has a bunch of videos there that he uploaded from Vimeo. And I'm not. I I would like to take this time to clarify that I'm not saying that I went to Vimeo and copied the URLs from his videos and then went to a website like clipconverter.cc, which allowed me to download those Cinema Insomnia episodes onto my computer Uh and then put them on my TV so that we can all watch them whenever we want. I'm not saying that I did that. No, no. And, and, if you didn't do that, then don't watch. Uh, I believe it was a uh, Mark of Mark of the Devil. It's a two part episode. Oh yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see the two part episode. 
I have a bumper in that one. Oh, cool. Awesome. That I, I will see that me. one then. Yeah. So, I'm oh, in the yeah, that playlist was awesome. I'm in the Bucket of Blood episode, which I really, really liked. You're also I, in the, uh, like the Star Crashers. Star, Star Crash. Star Crash. Yeah. I like the I like the bucket of blood episode because we did it in a coffee shop and my wife and my daughter Emerald, who was really, really young, like a, like like maybe three or four at the time. Yeah, she was also in the coffee shop. So throughout the episode, if you hear a baby screaming, it's Emerald. <laughs> and she screamed so much that um, she's in the credits. Nice. She got a credit. I think I think uh I think the credit is uh like w- wife Natasha and child. Yeah. I showed it to her. I showed it to her a couple of days ago. I said, Emerald, come over here. Did you know you have a credit on the television show? And she just given me a weird look and I, I showed her and 13 year old girl just giving me this dagger look. And I'm like, that's you. You're and child. You should be happy. <laughs> You see, you're on you're on a freaking TV show. Mm-hmm. The only thing that I don't like about making playlists is that they really do require maintenance. Uh, yeah, I find that with my own my own movie playlist that I keep. Oh, 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 speaking of maintenance, I got to tell you, yeah. my oldest daughter is in trouble. Uh-oh. Serious trouble. She's at that age. What now? She just she was just grounded not too long ago. Yeah, she she was she was grounded for a little thing, but now there it's like a new punishment. I have to think of a punishment. She's not even I haven't told her she's punished yet, but so it, it, when I make a playlist, it requires a lot of maintenance cuz like say you'll put a movie on the playlist and then yeah. that movie will be removed or this right. video is yeah, yeah. around. So a lot of times I'll go through my playlist on my YouTubes and I'll update it to make sure that it's looking all nice and everything. And I went to the Root Beer Show because Maxwell wanted to see an episode of the Root Beer Show. And I noticed that one was deleted on the playlist. It's, you know, I, you know episode 9, episode 10. And then it just said deleted video for the yeah. last one. And I, I thought that was odd. And I couldn't remember how many I had done. And didn't I do 11? I thought I did 11. Didn't Emerald host one? And I I clicked the video and it said that this video had been removed by the uploader. Mm -hmm. And then I thought that was weird because I'm the uploader. Yeah. So I went through my videos on my computer and it turns out, yeah, that episode was hosted by Emerald and and, um, Amber. So I, I... confronted her about it and after a while she admitted to me that she just hated that episode she hated the fact that she starred in this video she's not shy Uh but she's just she's not used to doing things in front of people i guess or being the center of attention she likes being the sarcastic one in the corner so she deleted the video from my youtube page yeah and that's fucked up right yeah. I mean, it's not just me. I mean, I have the oh, video. Shit. I can yeah. upload it again, but still, she went to my YouTube account and deleted the video. That's messed up, right? Yeah, very. That's why Man. I don't have kids. <laughs> I just can't believe she would do that. And I wouldn't mm-hmm. have I wouldn't have noticed it if I hadn't been, you know, maintenancing all of my damn uh, playlists because I have a lot of playlists. Yeah. I really love my playlist. It really makes my blog, like when I do the churchless movie of the week, really yeah. makes my blog stand out, you know? Well, and have uh, a lot of the movies that we do, you could probably do those as a churchless movie because you have, you know, I'm not complaining or anything, but you have slacked off of those since we started the podcast. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, I have. You know, I so. absolutely have. I don't mean to take you away from any of that kind of stuff, you know. Oh no, for just for 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 some reason that I just haven't fully uh, gotten to the bottom of. I just well, you didn't have internet I, I for have a while hard, too. Yeah, I, I I didn't have the internet for a while, which is why I wasn't doing the movie of the week. But now that I have the internet, I just don't have the patience to sit down and write. Yeah, I just don't have the patience anymore. So I, I, I haven't been posting a lot on my blog. And if I do, it's like a weird little thing. It's nothing, 
bigger personal. I just don't have the I just don't have the the patience for it right now. Yeah. But I try I put I put a movie in I put a movie in this last week. So so there's that. I, I'm trying to start again. And I'd like to say that the main reason why we didn't do an episode last week was the fact that it was my birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. I'm 38 now. Mm-hmm. I had a horrible day on my birthday. Yeah. I had a horrible day. I had I had my day off and the kids were out of school, but my wife still worked. So I, you know, my, my son woke me up at 7 a.m. and we had to watch stupid cartoons. And then my, my youngest daughter woke up and she started fighting with him and just nonstop yelling all day. Yeah. It wasn't until about one in the afternoon that my youngest daughter said, so dad, when's your birthday? Uh huh. And I said, well, you know, it's today. Yeah. And she said, oh. And then just went about her day. Just. Just making a mess and getting, getting, getting her brother to scream. My my oldest daughter, I was hoping would help me because it was my birthday. She spent most of her time in her room. Yeah, and uh, we ended up going out for dinner, which was nice. But that was about it. I got some presents that day. They were mostly things that I had already picked out. Uh-huh. Like I got this really nice Frankenstein uh, DVD set. And it's got the original Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein, Son of Frankenstein. It's got all the Frankenstein movies yeah. up, to, up to and including Abbott and Costello. Oh, yeah. You got that one? I got the cheaper yeah. one. Yeah. I got no, the it's cheaper got, one. It's got all of them. I was really happy with that. It, it apparently just came out. And um, my my wife had gotten me a bunch of really, really nice things for my birthday, but she had got them on Groupon and we were going to move, but we weren't sure if we were going to move and we ended up not moving. So she didn't order the things until very, very late. So just now today I got the last present. My birthday was on March 22nd and now it's April 2nd when we are recording this and I just got my last present. So it's, it's kind of, it's kind of like Hanukkah. Kind of. It was very, it was a very spread out, uh, a very spread out birthday as far as presents go. Mm-hmm. My kids are playing with my present right now. My last present. It's a fairly big one. It's a Sega Genesis old video game system, but it's got 80 video games built into it. Yeah. Including all of the Sonic the Hedgehogs and everything like that. So my kids are going nuts with it. Nice. Nice. I don't have I I don't know if I have patience for video games anymore. Uh, nothing too fu- full blown or anything like that. Um, something I don't have to think much about. I'm into. Yeah, yeah. You know, Jeannie and I used to play the the, the two Left for Deads. Yeah, and it's like you're not really. I mean, you know, you jump in, you kill some zombies. There's not. There's nothing I have to think about with this. I don't have yeah. to play strategy or anything. And another one I had originally found on uh, Yahoo, which I broke down and I spent five bucks on to download, uh, is called Chicken Attack 3. Okay. And it is a very stupid kind of arcade thing where Earth is being attacked by chickens. Nice. And it does kind of a Space Invader thing. It's sort of like Galaglia, kind of like that. Yeah. Then you get a boss level, and it's just like, hey, I'm just hanging back shooting chickens. I'm not getting stressed over anything right now. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But yeah, I got I got the Frankenstein set, and mine stops at Ghost. Okay. Um, But then I had to get the Wolfman set to get Wolfman and Wolfman meets Frankenstein. And then it's like yeah. She-Wolf of London and that one with Oliver Reed. I forget a couple of movies I don't really much care about. Oh yeah. My Frankenstein, my Frankenstein also has those big ones that happen in the fifties, like house of Dracula and house of Frankenstein. Oh yeah. All in the same, all of them in it. Yeah. That's in there too. I really liked that. You did good. Yeah. Cause then I had to get Dracula, which I, you know, I like how Dracula looks. I just don't care for the movie much. Yeah. But I had to get that for house, for house of Dracula. Yeah. 
So. Yeah, that's why I'm that's why I'm happy with this Frankenstein because it's got all of them. Yeah. So our homework this week was to watch the playlist. Yeah, man, you had such good stuff on that, and the trailers, yeah. the trailers were, were yeah. really pretty awesome. Yeah, um, I was like, I specifically like uh, right before the feature presentation, the 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 general cinema space candy video because i remember yeah. watching that a lot in the like 80s growing up by a general cinema seeing that space candy go into the go into the trash that sort of general cinema the movie's about to start sort of a thing right uh-huh i've been doing this i've been doing this thing with my wife where if i see a video that i like on youtube then i'll click watch later and I'll say, okay, well, I'll save this for Natasha. She will like this. I'll save this video for later. Oh, I'll save that video for later. Yeah. But she doesn't have a lot of patience to ever sit down and watch anything. And if she does, she's just gunning through it, like watching all the Walking Deads and stuff like that. Yeah. So I, I have a lot of watch later videos. I have right now on YouTube, I have 155 watch later videos. Yeah. So I collect a lot of YouTube videos. But at the beginning of every – the first video on Watch Later, I keep it as the same video over and over again. And it's a video from the YouTube account WTF X-Men. Okay. And it's a wonderful it, – it's a wonderful account, and it just has little five to ten-second clips – from the X Men cartoon from the eighties slash nineties. Yes, I saw Jubilee. Yeah, does a, Jubilee a mall baby eat playlist. chili fries? Uh -huh. Does a mall babe eat chili fries? <laughs> My kids hate that. My kids absolutely hate. Does a mall babe eat chili fries? They go oh, nuts. I, on it. I hated her. I hated her. Wasn't she like invented for the show? I don't know. I but think she, she got a book after. Much. Yeah. Does a mall baby chili fries? They hate I'll tell you, that. sometimes, sometimes we'll Jeannie and I will get into playing YouTube, like playing it like a game. Like, you know, maybe you come up with, gee, I haven't heard Puff the Magic Dragon in years, you know, and then pulling shit out of the sidebar. Yeah. Nice. You know, and see how long you can keep that chain going. Yeah. Or, Distant childhood memories that are just sitting in the back, you know, like an old children's show on TV in New York, Wonderama. Yeah. Which is was a major fucked up show because it was it was in New York. It was in New York City. So like you know, he it was just a guy, Bob McAllister, and he would play games with the kids and stuff like that and bring on animals you know you, you typical children's stuff but then he would bring somebody on as like special guests and and they would be like vanilla fudge <laughs> you know like anybody passing through new york fucking roger daltrey was on wonderama that uh, wow you know but one day we are we just got like gonna she's just gonna come home it's friday we're gonna go in the bedroom and relax and we'll play the YouTube game on the uh, Blu-ray player, which yep. is not set up the same. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we get really stoned and we have a couple of drinks and, you know, instead of doing like a real dinner, we do like munchy foods, just bring munchy foods into the bed and just kind of snack and crap. Yeah. Uh, and it's not set. YouTube's not set up the same. So this game sucks in here. You know, yeah. just can't play it. So I just put on something really random and I'm going to like maybe take the snacks in the kitchen. I forget why I was leaving the room. And I just randomly stopped on a Japanese cooking show. Okay, so I leave the room and I come back just a minute or two later and Jeannie's sit, sitting on the bed all wide-eyed and she's like... <laughs> I I understand Japanese. <laughs> she's just watching this cooking show and she's like, I I know what they're saying. 
And I'm like, holy shit. And I start looking at it and I start understanding them. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm like, no, they're speaking English. (laughs) (laughs) Their accents are just so horribly bad. You can barely tell it's English. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) And it was just like, Oh man, I got to check the name on the bag. This is good shit. We got to get more of this. <laughs> check the name on the bag. Wow. It's actually a bottle. You get it in kind of like a uh, medicine bottles. Yeah. Yeah. Prescription bottles. Mm. So, man, that is weird. But some of those movies in the in the trailers was were just awesome. I really want to see Brotherhood of Satan. That's like on my list of shame. Yep. I probably yeah. saw it when I was a kid. It looks vaguely familiar. Yeah, I certainly haven't pretty, seen it, it in like pretty. easy 20 years. Yeah. And have you I ever... Had a, I, had a, I had a big debate with my wife over whether or not I should put any uh, Wang Wang videos on any uh, trailers from Wang Wang. Yeah. Ah, I would be I down with like Wang Wang. I use those like too much. Oh. The trailer for O double O O. Yeah. For your height only. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I really like, I really, really, really like the snack bar ad that starts out like some sort of bizarre, twisted, satanic snuff film. It was during the intermission. Yeah, I'm not sure I recall that like, one. Creepy guys in robes, and they have a knife, and they they're they're digging into something, and it's all red and bloody. And eventually, it it pans down, and you see that they're uh, actually eating pizza, but it's so dark you can't you couldn't really see it before. Yeah, and then and then the announcer comes in, and it's all deep. Everybody loves pizza. <laughs> I remember the first the first time that I saw that my friend Tom and I were hanging out and we were crazy drunk and it it, it was included on this videotape that I had gotten from a sketchy source of uh, movie previews and stuff. So when I and when I first saw that I'm like holy shit what the hell is this? It scared the crap out of me. I don't know why I don't remember that one. It's it's right near the beginning of the intermission. Huh. It's really adorable, and it's right before the uh, the Saturday the Saturday Night Live commercial that my family's in love with. Swiftamine. Swiftamine. The, the Taylor Swift drug. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I really liked uh, Walt Disney's The Story of Menstruation as well. I like that one. And I like the fact that the movie ends and then there's still a whole bunch afterwards. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. There's like 15 minutes after the movie. If you want to stick around, there's a Mystery Science Theater short. Go, go. I love go, go. Go, go. So much. Go, (laughs) go. I love go, go. It's the first thing I ever posted on YouTube because on my blog. Oh, go, go, go. go. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The 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 ghost. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, 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 I posted on my blog about how I re- vaguely remember Rudy and Gogo's world famous cartoon show from TNT. Mm-hmm. And one year they had, they did a, a, a New Year's Eve special and they, they just, they played a whole bunch of really bad movies on New Year's Eve and and uh, the blob was one of them and during the blob they announced that their pet goat Gogo was going to run for president and they <laughs> used some footage from the blob and then they went into this song and I, I had only seen it once in my life but I just became obsessed with the song and and it was just you know burned into my brain so I made a, a post about it on my blog and then one of the creators of the show contacted me and said, I'm so happy that, that you, you love this. Would you like the video? <laughs> so he sent me the video and he sent me some promotional stuff and he he did this and that. So I posted, um, I, it was the first video I 
posted on YouTube and I wrote uh, about it. I said, um, go, go the goat from a TNT show in the nineties that no one remembers one ran for president this video is mad and this song will stick in your head for the next decade shades of adult swim here because the mm-hmm. because it go go happened in like 1998 or 1999 yeah so then after i posted yeah. the video the creators the creator contacted me again and said that's so funny that you put shades of adult swim because this yeah. was we created this about five or ten years before adult swim yeah. came around yeah. but most but, of us who created Rudy and Gogo, who worked on that show, went to work on Adult Swim. Nice. Yeah. So yeah. I was really nice. proud of that. My my son is obsessed with the video. He loves and Maxwell. You're here now because you're the, a constant guest on this show. Do you like Gogo? Yeah. Sing the Gogo song. No, come go, over go. here and sing Gogo. Come over here and sing Gogo. Go. All right, then. That's close enough. There's not too much to, to do in the song. So Maxwell loves Go-Go. I love Go-Go. Go-Go is the best. We yeah. should all love Go-Go. Yes, everybody should love Go-Go. So we should talk about this week's movie. Interesting little piece of work now, wasn't it? Yes. Yes. Uh, this week's movie was is called Baffled. Uh, it's it's a 1973 made for TV movie, which also doubled as a TV show pilot that wasn't picked up. Yeah. Leonard Nimoy stars in it, and he he, he plays a green screen race car driver. Yes, very much so. Which used to be a sport where you would pretend to race, but actually you were just sitting in front of a green screen holding a uh, 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 like a. Podcast. Maxwell, are you taking over my podcast? Because podcast. He's just saying because podcast over and over again. <laughs> and it's just his podcast just build there was a rock in the house. There was a, a big rock. There was a rock in the house? A big rock. Podcast? Oh. Yeah. You you like talking to the podcast, don't you? Yeah. Yeah? I like it. He really likes he has me play the podcast on YouTube over and over again, just so that he can hear the theme song and then whatever little thing might be in the beginning. Cause he knows that sometimes it'll be the Leva Maxwell. Come over here and say yeah. the Leva. Look out. The Leva. <laughs> that was, could you hear that? Cause yes. that was really cute. That was adorable. <laughs> and then sometimes it'll be, um, uh, him. Sometimes it'll be him. And, mm-hmm. and he likes dancing to the song. He really likes that. Yeah, I'm, I'm starting to build up like a little library that I could just use as defaults now. Yeah. Because I kind of like having something kick in first, you know. Yeah. It, it's it's cute. It's cute. And Maxwell Maxwell really likes it. Um, so in in Baffled, Leonard Nimoy plays a race car driver named Tom Kovac. Ko, Ko, Kovac. Kovac. Kovac, yeah. Go back. So he plays a Polish psychic race car driver. A a Jewish actor plays a Polish psychic race car driver. Um, he's 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 in a race and he has these visions and he teams up with a paranormal expert. He ends up in England at a spooky mansion and at times it really does seem like Shaggy and Scooby are gonna like run past. Yeah. Oh, very Shaggy much so. Very Shaggy much. and Scooby are going to run from one in out of an, one door and into another door, being chased by some monster or something like that, <laughs> while nineteen sixties music is playing. I really appreciated, except for the opening credits, uh, that they just jumped right into the movie. You know, yes. no fucking around, no no preamble or anything like that. He is in the car. He starts having visions. You know what the story is. Five minutes in. Her podcast. There was a. <laughs> her podcast. There was a baby rock. There was a baby rock. Yeah, there was in the house. There was a baby rock in the house. Hey, why don't you go see what um your sister's doing? That's a that's a good glitter band name. 
what pet rock baby rock baby rock that would be nice that yeah. would be nice and and it's all babies but all done up in glam like uh ziggy stardust yes uh-huh david bowie babies david bowie babies mm-hmm. yeah that'd be awesome but those opening credits man that that's the one downfall of this whole movie is that Very it is so it is so made for tv yes you know so completely made for tv and it's right yes. starting from the opening credits just all little scenes from the movie that you're gonna see in a second <laughs> yeah it wasn't it wasn't the best here's the here's the thing here's the thing um i'm going to get into this there's not a lot of information about this movie that's out there no. So I thought that I could take some time to discuss the late Leonard Nimoy. Okay. Uh, but here's the thing. I have, I have, I've done some research and read a couple of different books and magazines. I've done a lot of research. I, I, I knew little about Leonard Nimoy, yeah. about him as a person and his life. I know a lot about the Shat, William Shatner. Because he's a very imposing figure. I mean, he puts himself out there. Oh, yeah. Yes, he does. But Leonard Nimoy has always been more subtle of a person. So I didn't really know too much about him. But I am proud to say that I have a lot of information here about his life and what he's done. Uh-huh. Not a lot about Spock. because so I think he's had a pretty amazing life, regardless of the fact that he is part of this Star Trek universe. Yeah. At work... At work, we got three tribute magazines, and um, I read all three of them to try and find out information about Leonard Nimoy. The first one was one of those cheesy tribute magazines that seems that was just rushed onto the printer immediately after he died. It's almost as if whoever printed this magazine just has a warehouse of like 500 different magazines of famous people waiting for the day that like Mr. T dies. Yeah, exactly. Or like, it's like someone, someone from Star Trek died. Is it, is it William Shatner? We've already got the magazine. No, let get the other box. It's Spock. (laughs) Oh, okay. And then there was a magazine from Entertainment Weekly. And I thought, okay, well, this is going to be the one because I love Entertainment Weekly. This is going to be the good one. But it's all Spock. It's almost all Spock. Yeah. Just Spock, Spock, Star Trek, Spock, Spock. Here's our top 10 Spock episodes. Here's the things that Spock did best. Here's top 20 quotes from Spock. And I was really upset about that. The magazine, though, that had the most information about Leonard Nimoy was a surprising one. It is from CBS Watch Magazine because CBS actually has a magazine that focuses solely on CBS television shows, but it's made to look like it's just a television magazine because it's just called Watch. Yeah. But it's secretly published by CBS and focuses solely on CBS shows. Uh So it's kind of tricky. You know, it's a bit of a tricky magazine. But that magazine, oh, my God, it had so much about his life and growing up. And, and, you know, it was exactly what I was looking for. And I was quite impressed by CBS. I got to say, CBS Watch really, um, like, did it for me. So, Leonard Nimoy, hella dead. He is hella dead. Hella dead, yes. He is hella dead. And you, is- you couldn't help but know as soon as you heard that he went into the hospital, it's like, yeah, that's probably it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, I don't know if you ever watched it, but he was in Fringe. And it's yes. probably close to the last thing he did there. And yeah, he wasn't even really looking very good there. But here's here's something that I noticed, and this is a little sh- uh, a callback to one of our previous um, podcasts. I can't I can't for the life of me think of which one, but he does seem like he looked he he was born old. Uh, Nimoy. I mean, yeah, he, there were some movies he did in like the nineteen. 19- 
40s and 1950s where he looked kind of young. But even when he was Spock, he did look pretty darn old and he was young. But he's always since he's been in the, like the spotlight, he's always seemed like a pretty damn old looking guy. Yeah. Yeah, I think I would agree on that. Yeah. He's got was, one of those faces. Who was that that we were talking about when we said that? We like, might have been talking about, uh, gee, have we ever covered Levon Cleef? Levon no. Cleef was like that quite a bit. But Levon Cleef is a really good Primus song. Oh, yeah? Yeah. In uh, one of the last albums. Primus the green album it, it was a really it's a really good song <sighs> maxwell i love you it was hidden by a that guy was hidden by a rock that guy was hit by a rock yeah you really have issues with rocks right now maxwell yeah. like what did a rock do to you or or does he mean i rock like he's getting all political on us that's a good point. That's a good point. So, Leonard Nimoy, his parents were Orthodox Jews from the Ukraine. Yeah. And they fled to the U.S. to avoid rampant anti-Semitism. Leonard Nimoy was born in Boston in 1931. He spoke Yiddish all his life. You know I spoke Yiddish for a while? You did? No. Yeah. I... I, I I, I had done some acting in Phoenix um, here and there, but then I just, I, I found this guy and it turns out we went to the same high school, but he, he graduated like five or six years after me. Yeah. But I, I found this guy, his, his, his name was Michael Alessandro. That was his stage name. His actual name is Jason Alexander, but apparently there's some, other actor named Jason Alexander. Not a good one. And he was on a show called Seinfeld, which was apparently really popular. Yes. So he, so he changed his name. I just called him Mr. Michael. But he, he started this uh, theater company called Feast of Fools, and they would do um, plays based on books and TV shows and movies, and he did this wonderful, very gritty and violent stage version of Reservoir Dogs and mm -hmm. and and one of the things he started writing a bunch of scripts and putting me in them. And I did a bunch of things with him. And one of the things that I really liked about him was that he would put me in parts regardless of my race. Yeah. Because I look very Mexican, but he would just, he would just go, okay, you and Tyrone are going to be brothers. Okay. Now in Hollywood, if you get a black guy and a Mexican guy and you make them brothers, you would have to explain that. Yep. Despite the fact that I think that most of American families are just like that now. I mean, that's that's becoming very mainstream to have these mixed race families. Mm -hmm. But Mr. Michael back in like 1997 and 98 would do stuff like that. It's like, OK, Steve, you're you're going to be a couple with this. You're going to be dating this person. It'd be this blonde haired, blue eyed, beautiful woman. And it's like, thank you for not explaining that, because that's wonderful. Because yeah. I, I, I would get I would try and, and audition for a lot of parts back back in Phoenix. And my race was always an issue like, oh, well, you'd be perfect for this part. But I'm just not sure if we can have a, a, a person like you in this position. But no, yeah. Mr. Michael would just throw me in there. He would always just throw me in there. So he was working on this script that he that he had finished but he never filmed and it's it's it was like this crime comedy about a group of rat pack impersonators in vegas yeah and okay. the guy who plays frank is leaving the group so the rest of the group starts getting very violent in terms of who wants to play frank and I was going to play um, Joey Bishop. Okay. Despite the fact that I'm Mexican, yeah. I was going to play Joey Bishop. So I took it upon myself for a year to learn about Joey Bishop and to read about Joey Bishop. And he he came from like a like a like a Jewish New Yorky sort of background. So I learned Yiddish. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was Borscht Belt. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I learned Yiddish and I started working it into conversations and just freaking people out. But I just I dove right into Joey Bishop and and Mr. Podcast. Michael never ended up doing yeah. it. So I I, 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 I love Jewish yeah. comedians. I love Jewish culture, and I I was in you know growing up in a lot of Jewish neighborhoods. So you know I, I don't know how to speak Yiddish, but I've picked up a good few Yiddish words that I chuck around from time to time. Yeah. I was really happy. Like, I, I want to learn another language. I just don't want it to be Mexican. I don't want to learn Spanish. Yeah. I am happy with the fact that I don't know Spanish because that freaks people out. Yeah. I, 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 was, I was ruined for Spanish because when I was going to school, you got to take a language. I hadn't had one. So yeah. I was like, okay, well, everybody takes Spanish. I'll take Spanish. I, I didn't really care. Um, so... They had decided, I got into these weird things where I would get into classes and they would decide they were going to start doing like experimental teaching and shit. Like, fuck yeah, you people, yeah. I'm paying for this. Yeah. So the Spanish teacher came in and from day one spoke Spanish and that was it. Oh God, I hate that. I hate that. So that you're immersed in the language. I yeah. Hate that. So I didn't learn the language. <laughs> yeah. And then I, I, went over to religious studies and I was studying Buddhism. So because of that, I, I started studying Chinese for my language where they taught it like real humans. And nice. I was, I was picking up Chinese without a problem that I, I had to leave school at that point though. But that's another yeah. story. When I was in high school, I, in Phoenix, I was the last class to not have to learn a language. So I really like I, I, I was so happy that I didn't have to take Spanish like everybody else. But then when I went into college, I had to learn a language. I had to take two semesters of a language and I passed the first semester of Spanish. I passed Spanish 101 with a C and I passed it because the teacher was from Mexico City and yeah. was he was he was at, he was teaching Mexican culture more than he was teaching Spanish. So yes. I, I, I passed solely because of that. We took a week just dancing. Yeah. We had a week where we just learned different Mexican dances, for Christ's sake. So I passed that. But when it got to Spanish 102, I was just dead in the water. So I ended up taking um, a year and a half of sign language. Yeah. I was really good at sign language. And to this day, like maybe once a month or once every other month, some deaf customer will come into the store and I'll be able to converse with them yeah. and I'll help them out. And one of the things that I always thought was interesting about, about people who are deaf is that if, if, and I think everybody does this subconsciously, but if you're talking with a friend and you see that someone near you is deaf, yeah. almost everyone will be quiet. Really? Where, yeah. Most people will just be like talking like this and then like, Oh, those people over there are deaf. Look, they're talking sign language. Isn't that, <laughs> isn't that interesting? When in fact you should, it should be absolutely the opposite, you know? Mm -hmm. Those people are deaf! <laughs> isn't that crazy? They're speaking with their hands! That's how it should be. Or you can even be a bit more relaxed and just kind of be like, those motherfuckers are deaf. <laughs> <laughs> you got some deaf motherfuckers in this in isn't this, that fucking crazy in this golden corral yeah <laughs> god I love golden corral so Leonard Nimoy's parents didn't want him to be an actor his dad said and I quote son you can always make a living with an accordion <laughs> and man that's so true I mean, oh. Weird Al just rode that into a massive career. Yes, he did. Yes, I, he did. I, and I, I watched a couple of episodes of um, the the original Star Trek just to to kind of put me in the mood. And also, we did we had a week off, so I had the time. So I, I watched some classic Star Trek because I'm more of a uh, next generation, yeah, person. Then I am classic Star Trek. I've watched some episodes, but I have, you know, I'm not in love with the original Star Trek. So I watched some episodes like um, Mirror, Mirror, 
and the one where Kirk and Spock are fighting each other to the death and stuff like that. Uh, I was really upset, though, because I kept thinking, how awesome would it be for there to be an episode where Spock just whips out an accordion? <laughs> like, how awesome would that be? Yes. This is a primitive yes. Earth instrument. Well, you could have you given him given him just music. an accordion instead of that Vulcan Lear he would play from time to time. Yep, yep. You know? Yeah. I was huge into the first Star Trek, and that's all we had, <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah. So, yeah, so it, what was so interesting about him is that he laid out who a Vulcan is, and he he up until recently has been the only person to be able to play a damn decent Vulcan. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because he had the subtleties you know where that that black guy did an okay job in Voyager. Although oh, I was I never that show. big of a fan, I was never that big of a fan of Voyager. Yeah, but he did an okay job. I just liked the fact that there was a black Vulcan. There was a Blulcan. <laughs> I just liked that. There could be a Mexican Vulcan somewhere. Just I I liked it, but I, I liked the idea. But I thought he was just really way too stiff. <laughs> you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's like this uh, is a Vulcan with a stick up his ass. Odale Vatos. You know, That's my Mexican Vulcan. That's my Mexican Vulcan. <laughs> Hola. So that would Sorry. be a Mulkin. Yeah, that would be that would be a Mulkin. Or a Spulkin if you want to go like the like the the Spico Rama sort of a way. Have you seen the, the? You know what? I'll save it. I was gonna. I was gonna talk about another movie, but I want to save it until we get to the like the the official Star Trek part. Okay. So, uh, a Leonard Nimoy. He spent a short time in college, and he started acting a little bit in there. And he decided to move to Hollywood. His first film was a melodrama that bombed, called Kid Monk Baroni, which is a horrible name for a film in any time period. Yes. <laughs> He played a disfigured boxer, and it, it's a horrible movie. He was also in a bunch of other movies during that period in time. He was in Zombies of the Stratosphere. I have seen that. And I, I, I did not realize that he was one of the soldiers in the movie Them. Uh, yes. I did not know that because that's Them is one of the movies... One of those movies where, hey, kids, I'm watching this bad. I'm watching this monster movie. You should sit down and watch it. And they go, OK, let me watch it. And then, you know, five minutes later, they're just bored and they're they're out of the house. <laughs> but them was one of like, like the f the first movies where I'm like, hey, you should sit down and watch this movie. OK. But then they stuck by it because that was a movie where they really cared. They re my family loved that movie. Them. Oh, that, yeah, that was oh, the, man. that is like one of the best movies of its sort of movie. Yeah. Yeah, Them is a great, great movie. And that little girl, oh, my God. Oh, yeah. That is like blood curdling. Yeah. Yeah. So he was in a couple of movies. Uh, Leonard Nimoy got married to a nice Jewish girl. Then he... Then he went into the Army Special Services branch, and him and his wife moved to Georgia. <laughs> okay. Which is weird. He did 18 months in the Army, and then he moved back to Hollywood, and uh, times were tight. He wasn't getting a lot of acting roles, and to make ends meet, he drove a taxi for a while. That was his, like, night job. Yeah. And one night, one of his passengers was president john f kennedy cool and that would He's make taking a, a cab what's he taking a cab for yeah. i don't know but that would make a great play oh yeah because i'm already speculating yeah and like i get like the 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 only scene that i have in my head is um john f kennedy's in the cab and he's talking and really talking up uh, Leonard Nimoy because the John F. Kennedy would be nice like that. Yeah. And John F. Kennedy is like, so if you want to be an actor, like I can't do a JFK. If you want to be an actor, then what are you doing 
driving a cab. That seems illogical. <laughs> and then it's like one of those, one of those uh, walk hard, the Dewey Cox story moments where he's driving mm-hmm. the taxi, but suddenly his head goes up and he looks off and he goes, that's illogical. <laughs> hmm. Well, I'm also thinking that he would be, he would be talking like that. You know, not so much because he's, well, yes, because he's a nice guy and all that. Yeah. But he doesn't want you to be asking why he's taking a cab in the middle of the night. I <laughs> want to know who JFK just fucked. Because uh-huh. you know he fucked somebody. You're the president. What are you doing yeah. sneaking around? <laughs> yeah. We need to figure out what Ruth Buzzy was doing that night. Yes. Oh, wasn't she hot? Oh. Ruth Buzzy. Oh, that hair net. And, uh-huh. and, oh, and she had a big mouth. That was one sexy yes. big mouth. Yes, that is true. That is true. <laughs> So, um, the, the reason why Leonard Nimoy became Spock, uh, it, it boils down to that whole adage that in Hollywood, it's not, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Mm-hmm. Because Spock did a pilot for Gene Roddenberry. It was, a, it was a failed pilot called The Lieutenant. And he starred in that, but it bombed. It absolutely failed, but a couple of months after the lieutenant came and went, Gene Roddenberry called up Leonard Nimoy again and said, hey, I'm sorry that the lieutenant went nowhere, but I'm doing this other show. It's set in space. Yeah. There's a little more might going have... on there, though. There's a little yeah. more going on there because, uh, I, I, you know, I forget who exactly it was that was doing the casting for the show, but the first choice, uh, I'm sure you must have run by this somewhere, the first yeah. choice for Spock was Martin Landau. I was I was gonna say Burt okay. Reynolds, but but I think I was thinking of like Star Trek or something like that. No, Star Wars. I was thinking of Star Wars. Oh, Star I was, Wars. I was thinking of yeah. The first choice for Spock was Martin Landau. Yeah. And if you look at the two of them at right around that same age, they look yeah. a lot alike. Yeah. There's a yeah. lot of similarities in the bone structure and all that. And then after he said no then they got Leonard Nimoy but the the thing about that is is that they were both on Mission Impossible yes so whoever whoever was doing the casting had a Mission Impossible connection I forget who it was you know so that's how he wound up being the second guy yeah well one of them anyway yeah uh originally Spock see I don't I don't know too much about Star Trek, but um, I'm I'm sure that this is a well-known sort of a thing. Apparently, Spock was originally supposed to have red skin and yes, eat by absorbing energy through a plate in his stomach. Okay. Like, wow, Gene Roddenberry really created likable characters. <laughs> Are you that a That would have been awesome. That would have been. Are awesome. you a Trekkie? Would you consider yourself a Trekkie? I, I would say I used to be. Yeah. Yeah. So so let me let me finally get to this. Have you seen the movie Trekkies? Uh yes. I used yeah. to be obsessed with that movie. I loved that movie so much. Um, God, that was a great movie. But I do get it confused because I've seen a couple of Star Trek convention things like that was that the one with the kid in the wheelchair that they called the captain you might be confusing a few things but no i don't think so the movie featured the the documentary trackies it came out in 1997 it was hosted by denise crosby yeah and it featured Barbara Adams, who was a juror in during the Whitewater case, and everyone called her the captain. And then it also featured this one crazy guy who was trying to make a suit from the original, like a like this wheelchair sort of suit from the original Star Trek series. Right. This like wheelchair robot sort of a thing. The so one that Captain Pike was in, right? Yeah. 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 But I fell in love with the little kid that they focused on in the movie Trekkies. His name was Gabriel Gabriel 
Kerner or Kirshner. He was like this cute, perfect little geeky kid. He became a minor celebrity. They just mm. focus on this one little, obviously socially retarded little Star Trek fan in the movie Trekkies. And he ended up becoming like a minor Star Trek celebrity. And I learned this, that the, the little kid that they focused on, he grew up and started working on special effects for movies and TV shows and stuff. And he actually did some of the special effects for the finale of Star Trek Enterprise. Nice. Yeah, I thought that was nice, but but I, I, I liked Enterprise. I wasn't in love with it, but I liked it. Here's here's the uh, here's the thing. Um, the movie Trekkies features some scenes that I believe to be fake or staged. OK, I, I believe that Trekkies sometimes at some points Trekkies is essentially like a geeky faces of death. <laughs> okay. Because the movie faces of death, there are some things they show on there. It's like, okay, well, obviously this is real. They bought some footage somewhere and they're showing yeah. it. Okay. But okay. That's not how a, an electrical, a, like a killing someone from the electric chair. That's not how that works. Right. That's obviously not a satanic orgy. They're obviously not really eating that person okay so this movie is like <laughs> half real and half fake there are some scenes in trekkies where i feel like these people are uh just putting the documentary crew on yes you know like some scenes where they go to the town of the town of vulcan which is somewhere in the Midwest. And there's a group of like 20 something teenage boys and they're like, oh yeah, this is a really fun party. Yeah, I'm drinking this Romulan beverage. <laughs> uh, our, our parties have been getting really big lately. Last year, we actually had a girl show up. <laughs> and it's like, okay, well, I'm pretty sure you guys are just fucking with me at this point. It was one pretty woman sure. There was one woman that I, I've seen in a couple of them, and it might be the one that you're talking about, I'm not sure, who is, she's almost like a fucking Star Trek LARPer. I don't know exactly what she is, but she's like an admiral. Yeah. And she always wears her uniform. Yeah, that's the one I'm talking about. The incredibly short haircut and way too serious. Yeah, yeah she was creepy. That's the one I'm talking about. That's Barbara Adams. She was the one where she's she's she was picked to be a juror for the Whitewater case. Yeah. And, and it's like, what if President Clinton shows up? Well, I'm still going to wear my Star Trek uniform. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, really? Wow, that's serious. <laughs> that's like some serious love there. Yeah. But one of the things that I wanted to focus on was was. I didn't want to just focus on Spock. Oh, no. So there's, there was more to him than just Spock. You mentioned Mission Impossible. He was in Mission Impossible. But, okay, just one last note here, though. But, yes. But the, the problem is, is that with as great as Spock was as a character, it really hurt Nimoy for quite a while. Oh, yeah. And it's oh, something yeah. that you see a lot. Just like Herman Munster really hurt Fred Gwynn's career. Oh, yeah. You know? Much in the oh. same way Spock did that to Leonard Nimoy. Yeah. He was in Mission Impossible. Uh, when I think of Leonard Nimoy, I don't think of Spock first. I think of In Search Of. Yes. Because I loved In Search Of. Oh, yeah. I used to watch that all the time. They used to always be on on the weekends or like on a Sunday on some UHF channel, and it would creep the crap out of me. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm older, so I saw it first run. And yeah. it was it was like a fill in kind of a show, you know. Yeah. You would have the game shows in that like seven. Well, in New York time, like for the hour from seven to eight and they would throw that on. Yeah. That was that's the sort of show that that was. He was also in the remake of Invasion of the Body Snatchers, which I haven't oh, seen was, forever. Oh, you haven't. Oh, okay. yeah, I haven't in seen forever. it in a long time. It's yes, on. Maxwell. It's on Netflix, Max man. Maxwell, what do you have to say? <laughs> this guy. This guy. This, who are you pointing at? That's Galactus. He's the world eater. He eats worlds. This guy. He's he living a planet. 
Yes, he oh. does live in a planet. Yes. Mars. Why? Oh, he lives in Mars? Yeah. Oh, okay. Why don't yeah. you go tell Emerald? I think Emerald really needs to know that. Why don't you go and tell her? Uh, this is this is a fact that weirded me out. Apparently, Leonard Nimoy was really big on the stage. He did a lot of stuff on Broadway and off Broadway and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. He was starring in the play One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest um, about a year before Jack Nicholson did the movie. And I can't comprehend any version of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest where Randall P. McMurphy is played by Leonard Nimoy. <laughs> It's like I know Leonard Nemo is a great actor, but God, I just can't imagine that the guy thumbing his nose at authority and being this badass is Leonard Nimoy. I just cannot do it. <laughs> cannot do it. Yeah. I don't know. It, it would be interesting, though. It would be interesting for him to show just that kind of emotion. Yeah. You know. Oh, speaking of speaking of uh, weird film facts. I recently learned something that also I can't comprehend. Apparently, Tim Curry used to be a blonde. And he auditioned for the original play, The Rocky Horror Show, but he wanted to be the monster. He wanted to be Rocky because he was a blonde haired, blue eyed beach blonde sort of a guy but when they heard him sing they said hey why don't you try out for the lead role hmm. and so he got the lead role and dyed his hair black and he's dyed his hair black ever since yeah i can't imagine a blonde haired tim curry uh no no he would look sickly yeah my 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 oldest daughter she said you should google that and i said no i'm too scared to i don't i don't want to do that <laughs> If you kidding me, that'll ruin Clue for me for life <laughs> once I do that. And I love Clue too much. <laughs> Ever Google that. He also did a lot of voiceover work, Leonard Nimoy did. Yeah. He was in the Disney movie Atlantis, The Lost Empire, which I have never seen. Let's just touch on Invasion of the Body Snatchers again. First, it's on Netflix. Yes. Okay. You need to watch it again. It's, it's, it's a great fucking movie. Leonard Nimoy, in my opinion, was a little, it, well, it was great to see him, you know, but he was yeah. really a little rough. And it really looked to me like, man, you're pushing it to show that you have emotions, you know, yeah. kind of just yank it back just a little bit. You know, yeah. it was almost like the movie that he had something to prove in. Okay, that makes sense to me. That's all I wanted to say there. <laughs> I I've s okay there it is all right I'm adding it to my thing right now to my playlist cool good 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 okay so that's on there I will watch that again because I haven't watched that in forever the only thing that I can remember is what's his name Donald Pleasance Donald Donald creepy Donald Sutherland yeah yeah that's his name yeah. yeah, and that's also a, a kind of a weird thing, and I, I notice this a lot. There, there are just simply some men that get better looking as older men. You look at Donald yes. Sutherland now, and you know, for a guy his age, he's not bad looking. Donald Sutherland yeah. back then was, what the fuck are you exactly? Yeah. He was not a good looking man at all. I um I I think I might be one of those people. Yeah. Because when I was growing up like a preteen teenager in my twenties, I was just like a hideously gangly, strange looking person. But now that I'm in my late thirties, I'm getting closer to forty. Yeah. I'm looking all right. Like I've never, I've never had like the best self esteem, but I can look at myself in the mirror and like, all right then, all right, hey now, because we have a book at work, we have two uh, biographies at at my job, of um Rob Lowe, yeah, and Rob Lowe, goddamn, he's like fifty one years old, 
but he's more attractive now than he was when he was in his 20s or 30s or 40s. And that's just how a lot of men age yeah. where when they're getting older, they're getting so much more attractive. Like I, I sometimes go and uh, visit Facebook pages of some of my exes and they a lot of them just look like trolls now. <laughs> Because their women age in a different way. Yeah. Where now I look at some of the women who I've dated and I just, oh, I'm really sorry, Debbie. It's <laughs> cruel. It's cruel how men and women age different. But you're turning into a troll doll and I'm turning into this. Yeah, but you know, but at I the same know. time, at the same time, feels kind of good. <laughs> yeah. uh, I told you you'd go to shit without me. <laughs> <laughs> Spock was also in the Transformers movie, the animated one from the 80s. He was Galvatron. Okay. And I would like to talk about Transformers for a while. Okay, go for, for it. For a little bit. Um, there were two toys that came out at around the same time. It is difficult to tell which one came first, but there were Transformers and they were there were GoBots. Yes. Transformers were very big, very bulky sort of toys, and they were very, very expensive. Yes. GoBots were small and cheap, and I could only afford GoBots. So growing up, I hated Transformers. I never <laughs> watched the cartoons. I never liked transformers at all once on one of my birthdays my parents bought me a uh, megatron and he used to turn into a gun which you can't do nowadays he turned yes. into a very realistic looking pistol mm -hmm. like a gun and that, that's definitely something you can't sell to children anymore and i had the toy for about a week until a neighbor kid came by and he said oh is that your is that a new transformer let me see it and I said, OK, so he saw it and he threw it on the floor, broke it into pieces, kicked me in the balls and walked oh. out. And my parents were so angry at me for breaking the toy that oh. they just got me that they said, we're never buying you a Transformer again. And from that point on, I'm just like, damn you, Transformers. <laughs> I will hate you for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. So then a Transformer movie comes out and I'm like, no, 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 Michael Bay. No, <laughs> you can't do this. People will eventually realize that all of your movies suck and are just filled with explosions one day. Unfortunately, that day has not come yet because I, his movies make a shitload of money. I like Michael Bay. I don't do the Transformer movie, so... <gasps> God, I hate those movies so much. I was at the age, uh, to quote a friend of mine, Mike, from the uh, Chin Stroker vs. Punter podcast, uh, he had once said, and this is exactly where I fall, is that I was at the age where I was no longer into cartoons, but before the age where I can then enjoy them again, ironically. Yeah. That sort yeah. of... 18 to 22 ish age <laughs> and you turn 23 and you start checking out the cartoons again <laughs> see yeah. what you missed <laughs> kids both of you guys get off the bed okay get off of the bed we need to clean that why don't you get him a piece of paper and a pencil to write on instead of on that so much drama <laughs> So much drama. Leonard Nimoy also directed a lot of movies. He directed, and one of these things is not like the other. He directed uh, The Search for Spock, The right. Voyage Home, and of course, Three Men and a Baby. Yes. <laughs> and that's weird. Mm -hmm. That is very bizarre. He also did the Ancient Mystery series for A&E in the 90s, very much an in search of sort of thing. And then Fringe, you mentioned that. He was also a pilot. He released a number of albums that were all horrible. <laughs> he was also an accomplished photographer. And I know this because I'm a pervert. 
Okay. But he did he he released a book, like a forty dollar book that I believe is now out of print, where the entire book were just photographs of overweight women naked. And he called it really? the full Yeah, he called it the full body project. Um and nowadays, people look at that and go, oh, Leonard Nimoy was for uh, body consciousness and women's rights, and he cared about women and, and how beautiful their bodies were. But when that book came out, I thought, wow, Leonard Nimoy's a pervert. How wonderful <laughs> is that? Like, I love Leonard Nimoy more now that he's released a $40 book filled with naked fat women. That's great. I love this man. <laughs> so when Leonard Nimoy died, my Facebook page exploded with all of these people. But every like one in fifth post about Leonard Nimoy or like one in sixth post was all about Leonard Nimoy cared about women and cared about body image. And and here's some pictures he took. And it's like, yeah, he was he he released a fetish book, essentially. <laughs> yeah, very much so. And that's awesome because, yes, it is. yeah, it's awesome. So it's awesome on a few levels. I can also, also like really appreciate the idea on an artistic level, you know, I mean, yeah. so many celebrities as their celebrity fades and they kind of have enough money to kick back. They're not, you know, they're not worried about anything, you know, but they're not getting the jobs anymore. They go yeah. off and they paint or take pictures or things like that. Roddy McDowell was a big photographer, you know, um, uh, shoo, Tony Bennett paints, Paul McCartney paints, and you start looking at, at their work and it's like, <sighs> your first career is better, <laughs> <laughs> you know? So I can yeah. appreciate that he, he tried to actually come up with a theme of pictures, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And not just all like pictures of fruit. Yeah. Because <laughs> Lord knows, Lord knows uh, his career of singing Bilbo Baggins themed songs were not paying the bills. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had fallen in love with like kind of avant garde work like that when I was like 16. I found a book and I forget by who it was, but. It was all black and white pictures of asses, of female asses. But like, just like the ass and the legs. Hmm. And the rest of the woman would be gone. So it would just be like a, an old train station and an ass. <laughs> you know? Nice. Just, just different locations and an ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can get down with that. Hey, I I didn't I I got to admit I did not particularly enjoy the movie Baffled. Um, but but here's the thing. Uh -huh. Here's the thing. It it was a failed pilot. I would have watched the sh the fuck out of the TV show. Yeah, I I felt it more like like comfort food, you know. Yeah like a comfort movie. One of those things that I would watch after school. Now I, I have no, I had no memory of it whatsoever, which I was kind of expecting. I would except that yep. I know for a fact, I probably saw this movie a good five or 10 times when I was a kid. Yeah. You know, cause it would be on the four thirty movie on channel seven mm, every couple of months. Yeah. But it, like you could, the movie just seemed to be a bit too long, dragged out. I mean, if this was an hour long episode of the weekly television show Baffled, then yeah, okay, I would have watched that and it would have been a uh, uh, more fun. Yeah, but it was kind of dragged can, out, kind of talky. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can see though the TV show that this wanted to be. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, Leonard Nimoy's race car driver character is a bit uh, on the smarmy side. I mean, he he cracks wise. Yeah, he doesn't take everything too seriously, and then he's got the paranormal expert trying to convince him of everything. Like very X Files ish, I, don't you think? Yeah, 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 <laughs> very much so. 
That's a good point. I would definitely watch this show. Yeah. I just didn't particularly feel that I liked this episode. And they gave them shit for money, man. I don't yeah. know what the budget is, but I could look at the, you know, I could just kind of eyeball that shit and like, eh, 50 grand? Oh, probably. Also, it, it's, it is also worth noting that one of the women on in the movie is Vera Miles. Yes. Who was in Psycho. Yes. She was the secret star of Psycho. And because all the posters said, Janet Leigh, she's, she, she's starring in this movie. Okay, we killed her. Now this is the real star. Yeah. Of the movie. Her sister. And, that, and I forget her name, but I looked her up on IMDb because her face was so familiar. Uh, the other one, the one who was getting younger. Yes. She was all over television and movies like in that day. You know, yeah. I looked through the IMDb. I didn't see anything that like <laughs> where I was like, holy shit, she was in this, yeah. you know, but I just remember seeing her face like constantly and always hating her, by the way, too. Yeah. Because she's just got IMDb. that minge face, you know? Yeah. Speaking of IMDb, I went to IMDb as well. I found it interesting that that I mean, I this movie has a chat room. <laughs> really well every movie that they have on imdb comes with a chat room so i thought it was interesting it's like wow really so leonard nimoy's baffled has a chat room so i went into the chat room okay. just to see because i because i thought it was odd and and yeah there there were a bunch of posts and stuff like that some of them really really old but I just thought that that was interesting. I don't think that oh, this I thought you meant for live chatting. No, 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 like a, like a board. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And they can be fun to read through sometimes. Some of the comments get way out of hand. <laughs> another another part about the IMDb page that I thought was interesting was on the bottom of the page it always has this thing uh uh, more like this, <laughs> where they have, if you liked this movie, why not this? And a lot of them were, okay, uh, like, what what is it, uh, Cold Check, The Night Stalker, and stuff yeah. like that. And it's like, oh, okay. But the last, the last movie or video that was in the more like this, for Leonard Nimoy's Baffled, was the Bengals' greatest hits. And this really weirded me out. Yeah. So, I was, so then I was hoping that I could re-watch it and see some scene where, so we have to go to a spooky manor in England. Well, I guess it's another Manic Monday. <laughs> I wish that it were a Sunday... Because that is my fun day. <laughs> I was hoping for some sort of direct Bengals reference hidden somewhere in Leonard Nimoy's Baffled, but as far as I could tell, there was no direct reference in Leonard Nimoy's Baffled. Yes, but wasn't wasn't he was the lead singer for the Bengals, wasn't he? Um, I might have to get back to you on that. He was the, he was the cute some, one. Yeah. That might be, that might be, <laughs> um, I don't know the bangles too much. I was also looking for possible parts where any characters walked like an Egyptian. Mm -hmm. But as far as I could tell, they just walked like normal people. <laughs> so I, I, I did some other research and I found since this was a failed pilot. Yes. I came up with a list of other failed pilots nice okay and uh some of these are are good some of these are horrible but i there are some interesting ones here for starters this one i just realized existed uh it was a show that was created in 1990 for nbc and it was called puchinski not Peter, familiar 
Oh yeah, there's no way anybody could be familiar with this. <laughs> but uh, Peter Boyle starred in it, and he played a hard-nosed cop who died on the job, but he was reincarnated as a farting dog. <laughs> <laughs> but he still wanted to fight crime, so he was Puchinski, mm-hmm. the crime-fighting farting dog. So I have something to bring up later, too. So, <laughs> Like, how did that not get picked up for a series? I would mm-hmm. watch the crap out of that. I would buy the criterion of that. Yes. <laughs> And and I loved Peter Boyle, so I know he would be good in it. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know? this is amazing. He I would, would have all these little dog mannerisms down. Yeah, he would be I would awesome. Definitely. Yeah, I would definitely see him as a farting, crime fighting dog. Yeah. Another another show. This one I have seen, and this one I was obsessed with for a while. Are you aware of the show? Heat, Vision, and Jack. Uh, I, I've only recently become aware of it. I saw it on a documentary for something, and then I YouTubed it. Yeah. Jack Black is the astronaut? Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, prolonged exposure to the sun has given him super intelligence. It's on YouTube, yeah. Yeah. And then he had a talking motorcycle, which was actually his roommate, mm-hmm. which turned into this talking motorcycle the it, it was created by dan Harmon, who uh went on to do the show community which i was obsessed with he also, that's what i saw it on there was a, there's yeah. a documentary on dan Harmon. yes i just put that on my uh, uh i netflix. just realized that that documentary is on netflix and I, I i wanted to go see that documentary when it came out in theaters because i i'm a such a huge fan of fucking community I, I didn't know who he was. It was just like, meh, it's a documentary. Let me yeah. put it on. I, I, I watch a lot of documentaries when I don't want to think about shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Which is weird because documentaries make you think a lot. Yeah. So you would think that it would be the opposite. Yeah, it, it could just drone on in the background. Yeah. But yeah, oh. yeah, I heard of that, yeah. Really want to see that that documentary now. So another another failed pilot. It's on, it's on YouTube, but well, not the documentary, but uh, he laser well, no, I, and, and I, just put the, I just put the documentary on my uh, mm-hmm. on my Netflix uh, yesterday. I think I put it on my on my playlist yesterday. So yeah, but the actual crazy. pilot is on YouTube. Yeah, I've seen the pilot, but I saw it a long time ago, back in one of those things where I paid twenty dollars to get some copy of a copy of a copy on VHS. Mm sort of a thing. Yeah. An, a, and another thing that I paid way too much money for was the 1998 TV movie pilot, Nick Fury, agent of shield. Oh, uh, with the half with, yes. With David oh, has yeah. as Nick Fury. It's amazing to think that, you know, someone or someone tried that, as far back as 1998 and with of all people, David Hasselhoff really incredible to think that agents of shield is playing right now on television, but they had already kind of sort of tried it with David Hasselhoff. Mm -hmm. I, I, I remember they did an interview with the entire cast of the Avengers right before the movie came out in, uh, in entertainment weekly and they asked Samuel Jackson, how did you prepare for the role of Nick Fury? And he said, well, I just watched David Hasselhoff as Nick Fury and decided to not do any of that. Yeah. And then it says in parentheses, the rest of the cast looked confused. <laughs> so Sam Jackson explains to the rest of the cast that uh, David Hasselhoff played Nick Fury in a made for TV movie and everybody else is like, really, really? Is that true? So then the director, Joss Whedon, he says whispers in parentheses, we couldn't get David Hasselhoff. So we got Sam Jackson. (laughs) And I thought that that was pretty awesome. People freaked out about Sam Jackson at the time. You even did a clip on it. Yes, I did. 
Yes, I did. Because I there were so many people who were vaguely racist about their hatred of uh, Samuel L. Jackson playing Nick Fury that I was like deeply upset with it. Speaking of Marvel, another uh, all of those Hulk movies they did. Those yeah. made for TV Hulk movies were actually attempts to restart an incredible Hulk television show. I didn't know this at the time. So like Hulk, Hulk with Thor and those things. Yeah. 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 The return of the Hulk, the trial of the Hulk. They were hoping that these made for TV movies would get people interested enough that they could just do the TV show again. <laughs> I didn't know that at the time, but I loved those made for TV movies when I was growing up. Yeah. Yeah. Just the idea of seeing Daredevil and Hulk and Daredevil and Thor and all of that, I just thought was really awesome. Yeah. I I was not a huge Hulk TV fan. Yeah, because if you're going to do the Hulk, then you need to do like super villains and stuff like that. And it was always just a tormented man and Mm -hmm. sad walking away music. And yeah. It was more of a drama than a superhero it, it comic was book show. Way too highway to heaven. <laughs> yes, yes, very much so. Highway to smash. Yes, that would that would be a good name. There is another 1990 NBC failed pilot, which I I saw the day that they aired it because they aired it as one of those NBC movie of the week sort of like Sunday night movie things. Yeah. Uh, it was called Archie return to Riverdale. And it was an Archie live action movie where the whole Riverdale Archie comic book gang comes back to Riverdale for their 15 year high school reunion. <laughs> so they're all in their thirties and it starred Lauren Holly as whichever chick had the blonde hair uh betty betty yeah and gary kroger was in it from saturday night live in the 90s but it's all the archie characters but they're older and it it was really it was an it was embarrassing to watch (laughs) it sounds vaguely familiar i don't think i watched it i think i've heard of it though Jughead was a psychologist who had a son who hated him. <laughs> so he he impressed the son by trying to 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 have the son win over the girl that he likes. So the two of them teamed up and they rewrote the song Sugar Sugar from from Archie yeah. as a rap song. Oh god, no. Because it's the 90s and oh. and so they turned it, just Jughead and his teenage son rapping "Sugar, Sugar." It, it, it it's one of the most uncomfortable scenes that has ever been filmed and put on television. It's really embarrassing. It's really, really sad to watch. One of the things that I really that I remember the reason why I remember this shitty movie has to be the fact that. Like here comes Archie and Archie has this like girlfriend, but and they're going to get married, but they don't they're having a hard time with each other. So once they return to Riverdale, Betty and Veronica just have like the hots for him again and they start fighting for him again. So there were a lot of sexual scenes, a lot of scenes with Lauren Holly and lingerie and nice. whoever played Betty trying to bang Archie <laughs> and the two of them cat fighting it up and shit like that. And as a very young child, I remember saying, hello. <laughs> Why, hello there. Why, hello, Lauren Holly in lingerie trying to bang this freaking ginger on my <laughs> television set. I am intrigued by this. <laughs> So I remember watching that. I didn't realize that they were trying to do a pilot. Thank God that didn't turn into a television show where every week you had to watch 35-year-old Archie. <laughs> that would have been freaking depressing. It, but, see, that's the thing, though. You know, if we want to try to straighten out this country and things like that, make the showers safe in prisons, but make them watch that. Make them watch Archie's return to Riverdale? Yeah. 
you know, you got the you got the Crips and the Bloods and the Aryan Nation. Just get them all into a theater and put on Archie. That's good thinking. I it, it may be considered cruel and unusual. You yes, know. it definitely would be considered cruel and unusual punishment. <laughs> have them watch that. Have, have them watch Nick Fury, you know. Have them watch Doctor Strange. Yeah. Yeah. Doctor Strange, that was a that was another bad one. Oh, that was awful. <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can I'm gonna see right now if I can find Puchinski. Puchinski. There it is, right there. Puchinski full pilot on YouTube. Nice. I don't know if I can. I do not know if I can watch this, but I found Puchinski. <laughs> what What else is on your list? The list is good so far. I found Puchinski uh, and Heat Vision, and, and no, that's that's the list. That's the list. That's the entire list. I mean, I found a bajillion other pilots, but these were the ones that I had some sort of connection to. Not Puchinski. That just sounded fucking weird, but. <laughs> yes. There was another, there was another pilot. I forgot about it up until this exact second where um, this young kid is obsessed with um truckosaurus or i think that's the name of it in the simpsons but you know in the 90s they would have those like monster truck rallies and they'd have that giant robotic oh yeah 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 dinosaur that would eat up cars well they made a tv sh they tried to make a tv show for that character yeah so the kid is obsessed with whatever his name is truckosaurus and then it, the dad the kid's dad dies, but gets reincarnated as that character. That's pretty fucked up sounding. Truckosaurus or something like that. Uh, God damn it. I can't remember the name of Robosaurus. Robosaurus. Is, is I think that's it. Robosaurus. Yeah. They made a Robosaurus TV show. <laughs> My God. Robosaurus TV show. Let me see if I can find this thing. The craziest TV shows ever greenlit by network television. It's a cracked article. Uh, and right there, Robosaurus. <laughs> I'm just looking at the entries on YouTube. A Robosaurus starred in Steel Justice, a futuristic action pilot broadcast on NBC in 1992. It centered on a cop with the magical ability to turn his dead son's Robosaurus toy into a fire-breathing metal leviathan to help him fight crime. So I just got it switched up. The dad didn't die, the son died. Ah, okay. Steel Justice. Steel Justice. Steel Justice. Steel freaking Justice. That sounds familiar. It sounds like a bajillion things that it yeah that existed in the nineties. Steel Justice. That's going to be my porn name. <laughs> my name is going to be Steel Justice, but it's going to be Steel with an extra E. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Just like just like one of the first on the list here on YouTube. Steel Justice, 1987. You don't recruit John Steel. You unleash yeah. him. Nice. Nice. Steel Justice. That would have been a great hour of television. You you tune you tune in to watch Steel Justice, but you stay to watch Puchinski. Yes. <laughs> and then after that, an hour of Archie Return to Riverdale. Mm -hmm. And then stayed. the Sinai Pills. <laughs> yeah, I would have I would have stayed home and watched that. 
Most of these are NBC shows, and I think that says something. Yeah. That definitely says something. But now, Baffled, though, that's just kind of how they did TV back then. You yes. Would, you, would get a, you would get a movie. I'm sure they still, like, piloted it for real somewhere, did some test audiences, that kind of crap, but then, like, I eh, don't know if we want to commit to the show. Let's do a movie and see how that does. Yeah. You know? And then, like, Night Stalker, it's like, mm, let's try another movie. We think this one's got potential. Yeah. You know? A lot of shows were, were TV movies first. Yeah. A lot, of, a lot of science fiction that I find floating around on YouTube, just really old, made-for-TV crap that they definitely looks like they spun into series, and I'm pretty sure they did a lot of them. Pretty sure I watched a lot of them too. Yeah. I miss Alien Nation, the TV show. Oh man, that that show had had such potential and then really started pissing me off. <laughs> it only lasted one season, but then they made like an ungodly like a, like a surprising amount of made for TV movies to follow up on that. Yeah. I, I just thought of that, I think, because they, they just announced that they're rebooting that. I've been hearing talk about that for a while, and yeah. I, I hope they get it right where, where it has a much stronger message than the show wound up happening. And what pissed me off about that show so much is that any weird thing that would happen, like, oh, this is what happened on the ship, and this is what we've discovered... It all happened to George at some point in his fucking life. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, I used to take that drug. Oh, yes, I used to be part of this death squad. <laughs> you know, all this kind of yeah. shit. He was always involved with somewhere. I, I, George is the problem. <laughs> yeah, take you should him just, out. Yeah, just get rid of George. <laughs> yeah. And then that pretty much solves everything. Yeah, and it was it was, it was always kind of like, George, yeah, I, I used to eat babies. But, <laughs> but thanks to my strange alien religion, I've I've gotten past that now. Sour milk. Yeah, yeah. Sour milk. That's the same kind of thing that always pissed me off about Star Trek The Next Generation. Every, every, every season, twice a season or whatever, you would have a Data Flips Out episode. Yes. And it'd be like, look, Data, I really like you. You're a friend of mine. I really hate to do this, but I do have to kill you. You are way too much trouble to have around. Right? <laughs> Always getting into trouble. Mm -hmm. Just unplug him or something. So what movie should we do next week? Next week. I don't know. I, I, I have a couple of things to kind of kick around. Uh, I have two in mind <laughs> that that goes from really old to really new. Um, what's the new one? What's the new one? Yeah. Uh, it's on Netflix. Wolf Cop I watched last night. Oh, I have I just read an article about that movie. I haven't oh, seen it, though. I just oh, you'll like it. That, that it's on there. You'll like it. It was Wolf. it was fun. Yeah, they're working on a sequel. They had it up at the end of the movie. Yeah, that they're they, working on a sequel. I, I specifically like I I was reading some horror magazine a cup like a week ago, and I saw like this big article that uh, shooting to commence on Wolf Cop two, and I thought, wow, I didn't even know there was a Wolf Cop one. I need to apparently find Wolf Cop one. And see that, and then literally this morning I saw that Wolf Cop was on Netflix, and I said, really? That's mm -hmm. very fortuitous Yeah, that suddenly here's Wolf Cop. It, it had a fun 80s kind of vibe to it, you know? They yeah. set it up, the, the setup for the movie was really good, where once you get through the setup, you can really just accept and, you know, suspend disbelief for the rest of the movie. You know, it just puts you in that kind of mood. And then, but, but it wasn't, it was, it was silly, but they didn't play it silly. 
Yeah. They played it very straight and very serious, which just made it that much better. Uh, then how about we do that then? Okay. Cool. Next week we're doing Wolf Cop. <laughs> the other one was Haxon, which is an old silent movie. We haven't done one, and I want to get to that one one day. Okay. So. I, I, I am unaware of that. Oh, it's a it's a great old silent flick. Do not yep. watch it with the kids. Oh, okay. <laughs> gotcha. Because it's definitely some pre code shit. Uh, and, and you had a movie that you said you wanted to talk about. Oh yes, that was Trekkies. We got to that. Oh, okay. I was waiting until the exact moment where we got to the Star Trekky sort of stuff. Okay, cool. I have homework. You have homework, okay? Yes. It is actual homework because it has to do with math. Uh Uh-oh. Yeah. It's a cartoon. It's about about 20, 25 minutes long. It's a Disney cartoon. It's not Schoolhouse Rock? No, 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 no. It's a cartoon. I, for some reason, I'm just absolutely obsessed with it. it. There's something about it that's just really beautiful. It's a Disney cartoon from 1961 called Donald in Math Magic Land. It's on YouTube. I just sent you the I just sent you the link. Ah, cool. To it. I was just it, pulling it up. Yeah. Yeah. Donald Duck goes on a mathematical adventure. There's something about it that's just very quiet and beautiful and there, the music is beautiful. The images are really incredible. There's just something about it that's very relaxing. I like it very much. <laughs> okay. That's that, going to be some good homework. I'm excited about that. that. That looks like fun. But we don't actually have to do math, right? No. No. You'll just learn about math. Yeah. Because Schoolhouse Rock only ran up to 12, so I don't really know much past there. That's a good point. (laughs) A lot of them end there. A lot of TV shows just end right there. It's bizarre. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that this was a good episode. I think it was a good episode. So so final opinion, like a thumbs up or down on Baffled? Uh... If if you're a fan of Star Trek, if you're a fan of Leonard Nimoy, then you should definitely watch it. it, it it's it's pretty good. Definitely watch the playlist that I came up with because that's freaking awesome. But uh, when you see the movie, you can see the TV show that it wanted to be. And I'm I I'm a big fan of this TV show that doesn't exist. Yes, because I can see the TV show. I'm going to go with that if you're in your 50s and you want to kind of recapture that feeling of laying on the carpet, coloring, and looking up at the old RCA TV, this will bring back some memories. I miss horizontal hold and (laughs) vertical hold. Yes. And I miss static. TV static. I know. I've had a hard time even trying to recreate static. Like I was trying to explain that to my kids and they're like, you just can't, you can't explain it. I remember changing the channels with dials. So huge, mm-hmm. such huge TV dials thunk, 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 going from channel to channel. Yeah. Oh, it's just yeah. amazing. I, I had an uncle. Well, this is kind of related. It's a little off, but it works with TV too. Okay. I had an uncle, uh, when we all lived in the Bronx, my family got together fairly often, and then everybody just started moving away from each other. But while everybody was together, somebody was throwing a party somewhere, and everybody would bring their kids and stuff. And Uncle Whitey would take the kids, all of us, me included, into one of the bedrooms and set the radio onto a onto a static station. And then he would really? just sit there and be like, listen. Listen, you're going to hear the aliens. <laughs> you're going to hear the aliens. And he would get us to sit there for like 10 or fucking 15 minutes Jesus. just listening to static on the radio. So when Poltergeist came around, I understood. <laughs> yeah. 
Freaking Poltergeist. Freaking Poltergeist. They're remaking Poltergeist because they have to that. remake everything. Yeah. Everything has to be rebooted now in our society. I was quite upset about that. Mm-hmm. That movie that movie stands up a, a fairly decent amount. Yeah. For being a 1980s horror movie, it stands up pretty well. I've I've kind of gotten over caring about that because, you know, how many times have they remade Frankenstein? They've remade a lot of the movies that I loved as a kid, like King Kong. You know, they've done a few of those. Where, you know, go ahead and remake whatever you, whatever you want to remake. I'm just not going to watch it. It just upsets me that... that... I'm sure that there are people out there with very original ideas. Yeah. That are being passed up because, no, let's redo the A-team. And if you want to contact any of those creative people, you can email us at pope at (laughs) undeadcow.com. Nice. You can also, um, uh, we have a feed burner. You can check that out. Follow us on Twitter and on the Facey pages. The Facey Books. The Facey Book. The Facey Books. And on YouTube. And on YouTube. Uh, uh, Undead Cow Studios? Undead Cow? Just on Undead? YouTube, it is Undead Cow Films. I, I couldn't okay. get Undead Cow Studios because I'll bet you I have an Undead Cow Studios account with YouTube someplace that I lost. Ah, gotcha. So there it's Undead Cow Films. Gotcha. And don't forget um, to check us out on Stitcher if if you are into Stitcher. There, you know, I know there's a lot of big Stitcher fans out there. Uh, uh, Stitchites, I think Stitchites. they're called. Stitchites, yes. Stitchians, um, I think that is what they prefer to be called. Stitchians, so, yes. Yeah, Stitchians. Constituents. No, that doesn't really work. <laughs> I was hoping that would work. But uh, check us out on Stitcher because Stitcher is a thing that I didn't just make up. I'm here and Stitcher is the place to be. Yes, it's Stitcher is going to be the new um, friendster. So you want to you want to put in put on a very ironic sweater, grab a nice cold Paps Blue ribbon with your X-ray specs and listen to us on Stitcher. Stitcher. Because that's what all the hipster kids are doing. That's that's all they're doing nowadays on the Stitcher 24-7. Yeah. Just stitch, stitch, stitch. <laughs> I think this was a good episode. I, I think, think this was, was a good. good episode, yes. I learned a lot about Leonard Nimoy and Yiddish and playlists and Three Men and a Baby and <laughs> GoBots. Good stuff. Good yeah. time. And and now I'm going to sh- have to schlep to the sink and do the dishes. Yeah. Yes, so I already did the dishes, so. Yeah. So I already, I, I got out of that. I'm pretty excited. Yeah. Got it done early. Didn't want to have to do it after the podcast. That's so fortuitous. <laughs> I just don't want anybody to start scooching, you know. Yeah. Gotcha. These are the Yiddish words I know. Nice. <laughs> Very nice. Well, for Bunny Williams, I am Reverend Steve saying good night and uh, live long and may the force be with you. I may have messed that up, (laughs) but I stand by it.